Doko. Um, my name is Andrew Doko, and I'm honored to be the host of the third of the first excellent seminar of the BIM Excellence Organization. I'm from Albania, but I'm speaking from Rome, Italy. Uh, I'm an architect, uh, BIM consultant, and a PhD candidate on uh, estimate and evaluation on the Department of Architecture and Design at the University of Sapienza of Rome. And I'm also part of the working table of drafting uh, the Italian BIM standards and regulations. I have been a member of the community of the BIM Excellence since uh, 2019. At the BIM, uh, BIMA initiative, I'm the country editor uh, of Albanian language of BIM dictionary project. So welcome to all, Tashembetia. Uh, let me say some, uh, some words about the BIMA initiative. I, uh, uh, the, the BMA initiative is a group effort to help practitioners to improve their digital workflows and deliverables. Organizations and individuals who share our enthusiasm for digital transformation are welcome to join our supporters program. This is our first public presentation uh, and the, the BIM Excellence Seminar will introduce the BMA Initiative community with over 130 volunteers from all over 40 countries that working together to deliver useful resources and open access tools for free use. The BMA Initiative is a non-profit knowledge generation and sharing effort undertaken by, uh, um, by volunteer researchers from both industry and academia. The BMA initiative uh, provides a community-based research-driven alternative to top-down, authority-led and prescriptive BIM diffu diffusion policies. We are supported by uh, clear knowledge structure, structures, uh, a network of international experts and uh, um, an expanding modular language the BMA initiative delivers an uh, innovative, current and uh, timely uh, response to the opportunities and challenges brought forward by BIM adoption at all organiza organizational scales. The first excellent seminar will present the work developed by uh, BIM Excellence initiative. Uh, it will be a milestone for learning uh, knowledge and information exchange. For more inspiration, please uh, visit uh, the site of BIM Excellence Organization and read the material uh, there available. Uh, let me take a moment to give you an overview uh, of our schedule. Uh, yes, today we will, uh, we will we 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 are going to presenting an insight of our growing community, and we will explain our community numbers, activities, and projects. So we will have a word from a BMA initiative uh, supporter, and we will uh, present the integrated information project. Uh, this project uh, aims to facilitate the delivery of open access integrated information uh, to, to guide the um, generation, use, sharing, uh, storage and reuse of uh, asset information through its life cycle. Integrated information, it will be really complex, but uh, we will see the ways how to manage and organize that uh, complexity. Uh, this presentation will be followed by questions and answers that we will have one moment uh, and uh, we, we ask to you to, um, to, to share your questions in uh, uh, some moments of uh, that presentation. Um, now uh, we have to some of your comments so uh, comments or questions will be forwarded to the presenters uh, in the questions and answer uh, session it will be a moment of interaction so uh, we you can participate on uh, youtube or uh, on facebook chat as well 
this seminar also will be recorded and available on YouTube. And uh, of course, you can find uh, on YouTube the day one and the day, day two recorded on Friday and uh, uh, Saturday. Uh, posts of, of uh, the seminar on so social network are, are most uh, uh, appreci appreciated and you can use hashtag like uh, BIM Excellence, Excellent Seminar or BIM for sharing that post. So I want to thank all our supporters and today today we we will um, uh, join uh, and we, we have the possibility to, to talk with uh, Felix Grau and uh, we are um, uh, very happy that um, uh, in uh, those th three days of beam excellent seminar we have a great great uh, participation for our uh, that that it was the our first seminary beam excellence and uh, we can say we can show some numbers of uh, our three days uh, it is very interesting to note that uh, participation has been from a lot of uh, professionals and uh, from a lot of countries all around the world. Uh, for sure, we, uh, we, we have uh, in all three days uh, a lot of uh, also students and researchers. And um, I just like to, to remind you to verify the email for receiving the materials uh, of uh, three of the, uh, those three days uh, from uh, three August. And uh, uh, now we can start the first session with um, uh, Mr. Bilal, the initiative founder, director, and BIM dictionary editor, Miss uh, Lorena Ledi and uh, Ms. Oriola Braoli, our two community coordinators. We uh, will present our growing community. Uh, so welcome Bilal, Lorena and Oriola. Thank you. See you. And uh, I will tell you a little about our community, how we are growing through the, through the years. Uh, we started in 2016 and we have been growing a lot in the last years, especially in the last year. Uh, we grew a lot and uh, we have an expectation to grow even more in the next years. And uh, especially because we have some uh, project, macro projects and micro projects that we are bringing more people to contribute with us. I can say that we have the extended description, so we are going to have more topic curators and specialists. Also, our language teams, because we are uh, welcome to more co-editors and reviewers for some of other uh, our languages. And uh, also, we have uh, 24 uh, teams from uh, 4,000 and something languages that we have in the world. So we are open for new languages to join us in the BIM dictionary. We also have the semantic structuring that we are going to bring more people for it. And also the macro adoption team. Uh, we are opening and we are going to an next step now. So we need more uh, volunteers to uh, join Fort with us. And also the model use templates teams because we had the first set with the class detective and now the, the group from the class detective, the Amazonians, they will be the managers and we are going to bring more people for the model use template for other uses. Okay, I can say photogrammetry and other ones here. And also we are going to, uh, those two, the F2 and the F3, uh, they will be presented today by Lorena, Fernanda and Burjo. So you will know more about those two projects that we have. And F3, Software Classification Team, we are launching today and uh, we are bringing more specialists in implementation, in, in being, being users of software, to join this team, okay? Ari, it's with you now. Um, hi everyone, uh, Persian Depia. Uh, nice to meet you again. 
Uh, I'm the out outreach coordinator and I want to talk uh, with you about the community growth and the new volunteering opportunities. They will be open very soon, uh, starting from September 15. The volunteering op opportunities will differ uh, by the micro projects that the BME is going to develop. There will be a published competency profile according to which the vetting and the recru recruitment will happen. So keep in touch with the BIM Excellence because project openings will be posted in the website in the bi-monthly cycles. Uh, the opportunities are going to be specific um, according to the projects and uh, they will be based on specific competencies. So if you visit the link uh, on the right, uh, there will be, you will find the open opportunities in uh, September, uh, starting from September 15. So good luck and thank you very much. Okay, thank you, uh, Oriola, and uh, thank you, uh, Lorena. And uh, this uh, section is about, of course, about the community and how it plans uh, to grow. As you've seen from the numbers, we have been growing, but uh, not too fast. And this is intentional because we want to absorb all the talents that you know uh, apply to us, and we want to make sure that they're working on something that is meaningful to them, and at the same time, interconnected with everything else now we have a really uh, big plans to continue to grow in many ways not just grow in numbers of course uh, yesterday we discussed many topics uh, different projects today you will hear about other projects but there are also other things which to reach out to the community at large and uh, to expand our knowledge sharing commitment to to everyone uh, just going to share with you a couple of thoughts uh, today, and we will have a chance to discuss these in specialized webinars over the next uh, six to nine months. One of the things that uh, we, we want to do is we have the BIM ThinkSpace. Many of you would already know this blog post is one of the oldest uh, uh, blogs uh, uh, since 2005. It's a very slow blog, but it is very intentional. Uh, there is a plan now to rejuvenate it and to uh, to publish uh, theses by, by different uh, early career researchers, PhD students, master's students of practical benefits uh, to professionals. So soon we, we're looking, of course, for a volunteer to help us with this and, and, and a position will, will be made open soon to help manage this project. So that's our first uh, uh, community outreach to, to grow our knowledge sharing thesis in a, in a post. We also, we want to, uh, to also uh, start uh, sending out our newsletters. We, we have more than 2000 subscriptions at the moment, but you haven't sent a single newsletter. We want to start, but the, the reason why we're delaying it, because we want to do it properly. And uh, also we're looking for volunteers to help us to deliver a newsletter that shares knowledge from across different uh, projects. You will see here, just in this slide, that there's a different targeting strategies. We have a, a strategy to target early career researchers, to, to explore their research, make it available. We also have, a, have a, another uh, in order to reach uh, decision makers, policy makers through the newsletter. One, one of these uh, you know, other strategies is to use all you know, media available to us to reach different types of communities. And communities congregate in different social media. You know, as you probably know, people who go to uh, you know, use uh, Facebook extensively are different to the people who use LinkedIn ex extensively, although some people will use everything. And also there's a, a community that we are targeting, which is uh, early career researchers and uh, professionals, and they're also in the early in their careers. And we are doing that through Instagram. Uh, you know, with with amazing work by by Siham Barakat, my 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 wife and life partner, she is uh, she's have been uh, growing the Instagram channel. Now we have more than 300, uh, close to 400 um, uh, members, uh, you know, followers, and we're producing a term a day. She's producing a term a day, and you can see from the numbers. If you look at the you know carefully, I know it's very small. You see that the Brazil is over. Uh, represented yes again so the the, the love for the women initiative from the brazil is uh, overwhelming but also more interesting you will see that uh, the age range that we are targeting is exactly the right one here so between 25 and 44 is the bulk of the viewers and this is just a way of of how we're going to be developing our community outreach uh, strategy to use different channels to, to reach different uh, groups 
Now, there's other things we're planning, and these are planned events by invitation for specific groups. So the first one we, we discussed in, the, in day one about macro adoption uh, studies. We will we will launching a, a separate uh, webinar related to macro adoption, and in it, uh, before it, after it, there will be a call for participation, and this would be according to very specific criteria. The second call is for call for contribution for uh, the knowledge-based development for, for project A3, which means extending the, the glossary, the terminology that we have currently in the dictionary to become a knowledge base. The third one would be about integrated learning. And also discussed this a little bit briefly yesterday and the call for collaboration with uh, with, uh, with researchers in the educational domain and also uh, you know, uh, specialists who develop educational materials. We, we are focusing on competency-based learning as discussed and we, we will be opening a call for collaboration soon. Another one is uh, we, we uh, uh, we are positioning the BIMI initiative with all the knowledge it, it creates and all the methodologies it has generated. Some of them are innovative um, you know, methods and tools. And uh, we want to uh, you know, encourage researchers to join us. And we want to, to uh, the, the BIMI initiative to be a research catalyst. So, and you'll see it today. Uh, where we do research at scale. And we are calling for people who are specialized in, in, in finding funding uh, to join us and to do collaboration research together. And of course, we have lots of tools to develop. You've, you've seen the BIM uh, dictionary yesterday. It's our first tool, but not the last one. We want to extend it and we want to develop new tools as well. So are we calling for support? And you'll hear from one of our supporters today. And through support, we can continuously extend these tools and develop new ones. Finally, I would say we are a community of you know of researchers from all, all over the world. We we share a passion. We we have a very specific uh, projects we work on, uh, but we also uh, want to become a network. So other than being just a community of researchers, we want to network. You know, create a bigger, a larger community with other communities of practice like us, like communities of research like us, associations, not-for-profit associations, etc., where we share knowledge, we share uh, a target, and we can work together. So hopefully in the, in the next cycle, we will focus on growing the community into a network. We already have lots of collaborators in the macro adoption project. We want to expand this to uh, most projects. So we have, in addition to our community, a wider network of, you know, of tens of, of, uh, of communities of practice like us passionate about the same things. But this, uh, uh, this concludes uh, this present presentation about uh, the community and uh, looking forward to uh, uh, answering your questions and having a discussion with you later. Thank you. Thank you, Bilal. Um, your presentation was uh, really significant. And uh, I think that all these informations are important for sharing uh, our mis mission of the BMA initiative. And of course, uh, our, um, our work that can encourage and uh, new volunteers to join us uh, in the future. And I really think that uh, our community will be bigger uh, after that, uh, that seminar. So thank you again. Thank you. And now uh, we we are starting with the with the interview. So we have an important partner to that supports the development uh, of our knowledge structure and uh, projects. So I call uh, I call the BMA um, initiative colleague, uh, Miss Mr. Karol Argazinski, a uh, member of BIM Dictionary Project, to interview the contributor, Mr. Felix Grau from Nova BIM. Sorry. Uh, so, <clears throat> good afternoon, uh, BIM community, and uh, welcome for today's conference. My name is uh, Karol Gasinski from Poland. Uh, by trade, I'm an architect and uh, founder of uh, BIM Factorio, when we specialize with laser scanning and HBIM methodologies. Also, a uh, lecturer in uh, Zigurat Gro Global Institute of Technology, and in addition, I'm a member of uh, Building Smart Poland, uh, as well as uh, the manager here in Warsaw. So uh, 
thank you very much uh, for uh, being uh, here with us today, Felix, and for your uh, humble support for BMA community. And uh, I would like to ask you uh, for introducing yourself to our uh, viewers. Yo, hi. Uh, thank you, Carol. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Felix Grau, and I'm uh, joining today from the south of France. I'm, uh, first of all, thank you. Thank you so much for the slot uh, that allows me to present what we do at NOVA. I am founder and director of NOVA Building IT, uh, which is the company behind the NOVA BIM platform. We are based in Germany, next to Frankfurt, and our staff of today, 20 people, is mainly composed by construction professionals, means architects, engineers, cost estimators on one hand side, and the other uh, group of uh, yeah, important people for us are the web developers, uh, because they know how to implement the requirements of the professionals into a, let's say, a smart software solution, and uh, they try to deliver, to deliver the best possible user experience. So this is uh, the background of, uh, of Nova and uh, the Nova BIM solution. Okay, so uh, Felix, what what's um, what products or services do you offer, basically? Um, so um, with Nova BIM, uh, with the platform, we provide uh, web-based services to enhance some of the crucial steps in the construction process. The focus here is clearly on the construction cost management, always in connection with 3D models uh, of construction projects. Uh, to conclude, we develop and maintain web services and help our clients to get the most out of the functionality by consulting them as well how to integrate and enhance their workflows with BIM models inside the Nova BIM solution. Um, we can uh, decline our offer into, let's say, uh, three packages. Uh, everything is based on subscriptions, so there's no need to, to invest big money into a 5D BIM solution, uh, which is running on premise. All you need is uh, a web browser to, to use the features. Uh, the first package allows you to estimate the cost for your project in accordance with your BIM model, allows you to map the cost to any other structure like Uniform, Omniclass, or, or others, and it helps you to generate bills of quantities directly from the 3D model. The that second package great. there uh, just extends the process by e-tendering e platform. Uh, that allows you to invite contractors or subcontractors to, to bid on your project. And they all also have a, a view on the 3D model. The third package um, then accompanies the, the, the construction process on site. And uh, we have a, a mobile app for that that, uh, that helps you to uh, yeah, have your 3D model in the pocket and uh, make quantity takeoff. Right? Oh, that's great. So I'm, I'm going to definitely install that. <laughs> um, uh, my question is, what are your next steps for your company's future? Yeah, we currently uh, work on uh, some requirements that uh, came across from our huge clients like uh, Siemens, uh, BMW and Volkswagen that uh, who all want to improve their supplier management. So we are working on that. And uh, in the same time, uh, as mentioned already, we are, we're pushing our mobile app uh, development. And uh, I think this is, will be a huge benefit to have everything in your pocket to, to do uh, yeah. Cost, cost related uh, take of, uh, data takeoff and uh, issue reports, for instance. Yeah, that's true. So you're basically f uh, focusing on mobiles to make it for your clients, uh, for present and future clients, make it very like uh, quickly available to check whether any data they want to actually check connected to 5D. Um, right, it's uh, uh, already today it's quite simple because uh, all, all you need is a a web connection to uh, yeah to, to, to view and uh, edit your data. But uh, in the construction field, you know that sometimes there is no internet connection when you go deep down into the cellar or when you are in a tunnel. So there is no connection. That's why uh, we think it's important as well to provide a offline um, yeah based yeah. Uh, device. Um, but on your on your mobile on Android or iOS. Uh, mm -hmm. That's that's great. Um, uh, what is your take on the main uh, BIM issues your company tries to solve? Yeah, um, a crucial point is uh, a lack of classification inside the BIM models. Um, either building elements are not defined at all, or designers draw a slab with a wall tool. So. Yeah. This uh, um, has big potential for big mess. So, 
but in, in the same time it's getting better people started to to understand uh, that uh, a bit more of effort in the beginning during the modeling process helps to gain lots of time afterwards so things things are improving yeah it's, then it's working better if you put more time and effort on the beginning to right. make everything working yeah and um <clears throat> How and why do you support uh, the BIM A community, and uh, how do you see ongoing projects of uh, BIM A community? Yeah, we uh, started our sponsorship last year in May, and it, it was through uh, Stefan Lietke. I don't know if he's still active uh, within uh, your group, but uh, he did some consulting work for us, and uh, he, he he's been talking to me uh, about your project. And I was immediately interested, and. In, uh, I know uh, already today that we're going to extend our uh, yeah our sponsorship over the current period. In terms of your projects, I need to admit that I can't follow the details. There are too many, and uh, you put too much work into yeah. it. But uh, it's evident <laughs> to me that uh, it's professional work, and you move forward rapidly. And um, I've been working myself in German European standardization committees for data exchange, and I know how difficult it, it can it can be to find common sense and. Uh, particularly in an international context like you do. So my congrats to all of you. Keep on working hard and fast. Thank you very much in the name of all community. Um, uh, uh, do you want to, uh, th is there anything you'd like to show uh, to the audience maybe? Yes, I could just uh, show, give you a very short uh, impression of, uh, of our solution. And, that would um, be great. I just uh, will share my screen to you. I think you all should see now a small uh, residential building here and uh, we find in the same time for a selected building element the properties that run along so it's uh, all retrieved from an IF ifc file and um, according to all these properties um, you may um, yeah, start a cost estimation process by just um, yeah, connecting work items to the building components and uh, with all work items items are going uh, unit price so rates and uh, just uh, apply the cost elements and Nova is looking uh, what are the properties of the building elements are the cost elements of the same which have the same properties and then you uh, immediately have a cost estimation um, that retrieves the quantities and this is the, the important point from uh, the building components so you, you see just with a few clicks um, I uh, got a complete cost estimation here for, for a building. That works as well as uh, with infrastructure models, with MEP models. So, yeah, this is... Uh, and it happens uh, all, uh, on the cloud. Uh, sorry? And it happens all in the cloud. Everything is in the cloud. You see, we're here in the cloud. I'm on a Chromebook, so no need for Windows devices, Mac devices. It works in the cloud. It works the same on your, on your tablet and, uh, and on your phone. That's great. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your time, uh, Felix, and I hope to talk to you soon. And thank you for supporting us. Thank you very much. So thank you, Carol, and thank you, Felix, for your contribution. And uh, let's go with uh, the first session of the BMA initiative. So uh, now I, I call Mr. Eric Poirier, editor of BIM Dictionary French language, uh, and um, he will uh, present the micro project uh, from Integrated Information Project. Welcome, Eric. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Um, well, thank you for having me here. Uh, so today, actually, I'm presenting the Integrated Information Project, which is uh, Project EFT. Um, it's a large, pretty ambitious um, project. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, I'll definitely uh, go through the, try to try to go through the high level uh, elements. Um, but uh, definitely, if you're interested in joining, uh, please reach out to us and uh, get in touch. So the overall project objective is to facilitate the delivery of open access integrated information platform that can guide the generation, use, sharing, storage, and reuse of asset information throughout its life cycle. So it's based on the inf lifecycle information uh, transformation and exchange framework that was published in Automation and Construction 
in April 2020. A bit about the um, light framework. Basically, it's a, it's a uh, an extendable conceptual skeletal for defining, managing, and integrating project and asset information. It's a modular information management fr framework that tries to uh, strip away uh, preconceptions and uh, legacy um, thoughts of, around uh, information management in the built asset industry. Uh, it integrates multiple components, information statuses, states, milestones, flows, gates, routes, loops, actions, sets, and tiers, which collectively lay the foundation for an open access digital platform being developed by an international community of research and practice, which would be you. Um, it's an ongoing uh, development uh, project. Um, and we are so basically we're iterating between research and uh, integration into practice. The framework describes and aims to predict information flows across an asset's life cycle. Um, and its modular conceptual structure, iterative flows, and task oriented terminology are calibrated to guide the integrated design, delivery, and utilization of assets of any types, functions, or scale. So that you saw the um, information, the light framework. Uh, the paper is available online, and many of the conceptual uh, components have been described in the uh, BIM Think Space. So you can uh, go on, uh, go online, and uh, a lot of the concepts are also uh, available on the BIM e dictionary. Um, so to deliver the project, which we mentioned was an open access uh, platform, and think of a platform not as a technical uh, tool or as a part of it is a tool, but think of the platform uh, like a political platform or an e economic platform um, with the different uh, concepts, methods, um, models and instantiations that are developed independently, but connect to form this uh, integrated information ecosystem. Um, so the project itself, um, uh, we can go to the next slide. Uh, it aims to identify, develop, validate, deliver, and maintain this platform, this uh, this framework. So the, the 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 different constructs, models, methods, instantiations, as I was saying, are being developed, and many of those uh, you've already you already know um, are part of the BIM dictionary. So the language, the modular language, um, and the, the the different definitions, the model uses uh, that we'll see a bit later. Uh, the software tool lists that are being developed, as we'll see later, are all part of this uh, framework to uh, help um, basically uh, democratize uh, this digitalization. Because if digital was so uh, perfect or so uh, so great, everybody would be doing it. But um, it suffice to say that it's not the case. Still a lot of work to be done in the industry. Um, so this, these constructs, these models, and these um, uh, model uh, instantiations are developed by um, a project team uh, that uh, either we can have individuals lead uh, these different project teams. So here we see um, the 27 uh, different micro projects. We have about we've identified up to now 168 work packages. So um, I think if everybody, if every person in the BIMI initiative took a package, we would we would still have some uh, work packages left over for other people. So we encourage you to join. Um, as you see here, it's basically just uh, uh, showing uh, the different projects and how they relate to each other. What we've seen is uh, project F2, which will be covered um, later on, as well as F3. Uh, so both mall uses and um, the software tool lists that will be uh, presented later on. Uh, in this uh, seminar. So as you see, the relating the, the rest of the framework and the work packages across the, um, uh, the, the, the light uh, framework, F1 uh, is basically covers the entire uh, framework itself and uh, tries to act as a glue to connect all these different pieces together. We've seen F2 and F3, which we'll, we'll discuss later, um, around uh, targeted digital deliverables and resources and methods. And uh, without going into the framework itself, um, when we talk about uh, mall uses and having a uh, standardized or harmonized way to describe mall uses and the objectives, the activity flows, and so forth, we're looking at uh, targeting and defining digital deliverables. When we come to the software tool list, so project F3, 
uh, we're looking at resources and methods. So how do we instantiate these model uses and how do we uh, make them operational and how do we refer to them in a harmonized and structured manner? And of course, we have the rest of the um, different uh, packages uh, from F20, F30, F40, F50 um, that are aimed at um, basically uh, uh, structuring the different pieces, the different uh, information sets, um, uh, couples, and so forth. And so, uh, first off, we encourage you, if you're interested, to go read the paper. It's available on academia.eu uh, if you uh, search for Lifecycle Information Transformation Exchange. Uh, and uh, it's also, of course, available through the publisher's website. Um, the uh, the different components, the, like I said, 127 mic uh, micro projects, uh, 168 work packages, uh, many activities in there. And so these are uh, we're trying to not, as with the rest of the philosophy around BIM initiative, uh, is to not have a hierarchical um, sort of top down structure we uh, you know I am project lead but uh, each of these uh, packages can be delivered and um, developed and delivered through a sort of a more organic uh, and hoping self-organizing uh, structure so we look at it uh, as a, as different nodes so one person can belong to multiple work packages can belong to multiple um, micro projects um, and if you're an outlier if you're one of these people on the outside um, Please join, uh, connect to the network, and uh, we can help uh, help deliver uh, these different activities and these different components. And uh, as is with the um, basic uh, premises or the uh, the um, the way that the BIN e initiative uh, operates, it's a balance between industry and academia. Um, so we're looking for the relevance factor. Uh, so we, the, the idea is to develop things that are relevant to a practice and that will be adopted. Um, on the other hand, uh, we try to develop them and deliver them uh, rigorously and test them with through the academic or through the scientific methods. So making sure that uh, what we develop is uh, relevant, but also uh, done in a rigorous fashion. Everything is uh, delivered through the Creative Commons um, uh, approach, so uh, free access. So as you've met, have you seen on the BIMI we website, all the uh, different conceptual uh, components, uh, different aspects are, are freely available, um, which is uh, you know, key in uh, ensuring uh, uptake in digital transformation. Um, stuff like the mall use list, stuff like the uh, different competency topics and items, um, as well as the uh, maturity models um, and, and so forth. So these are all going to be available through Creative Commons. We will be going through uh, GitHub uh, and having to, to develop the technical aspect of the, uh, the platform itself. And so um, many opportunities to contribute. Of course, um, just putting something out there uh, and uh, hoping it, it survives uh, in the uh, digital uh, wild is uh, a bit uh, difficult so it has to be maintained and this is where this community comes into play and is uh, very important in uh, maintaining the um, so we have to engage communicate disseminate and build um, so basically uh, try to uh, grow the community as was mentioned at the beginning of the seminar um, but communicate what's happening disseminate the work uh, through uh, peer-reviewed papers through blogs through the forums uh, as many ways as possible, and of course, continuously build um, in a uh, iterative fashion. Uh, we have the forum out there to engage, and there is a Project F um, uh, stream, social media uh, and websites. So we talked about Instagram, the LinkedIn, and so forth. There's the different blogs, the Phoenix Space uh, blog, um, the, the dictionary newsletters, and of course, different webinars such as these and uh, many webinars down the road that will explain the different um, um, elements of the platform and what's going on and how it's being developed.
And so that's it. A uh, very rapid presentation of the light uh, framework. If you're interested, the paper is available on academia.eu to sort of lay the, the groundwork. Uh, we will be doing uh, other presentations. There is a presentation by, done by Bilal um, online uh, on YouTube that's uh, available if you're interested. And of course, reaching out, joining the forums um, and uh, per, uh, reaching out in, uh, personally to us is, uh, is welcome. Thank you, Eric. Your presentation of this project uh, was uh, so interesting, and I think that, uh, of course, information is uh, is the core of all the processes in BIM and uh, and in general in the management of the, of the project. So you explained that we can uh, we can have a lot of information and we uh, we can have uh, uh, complex uh, processes, but. Uh, but uh, everything is possible, and uh, if we have the right structure of uh, the information, we can reach our objective. Uh, for sure, we have a lot of information, and uh, in all the phases uh, of the life cycle, and uh, um, I think that uh, with one clear concept, we can uh, of organization, we can do it. So thank you again, Eric, for your work, work, and uh, for your uh, for your, your contribute today. Now we will open the uh, uh, for interaction with the public, and I will moderate the, this uh, section. Uh, let's see that the public what uh, about Nova Beam uh, and the uh, integrated integrated project. I would like to invite back uh, Mr. Felix Grau, Mr. Bilal uh, Sukar, and Miss uh, uh, Lorena Luedi, and Miss Oriola Braoli. And of course, Eric Poyer that uh, stays with us. Uh, for uh, that part, I have uh, um, uh, we have uh, some questions about Felix. So the first one is uh, if we uh, have some educational plans or licenses that uh, we could use at the university uh, uh, working with the students. Uh, yes, we have. Um... In fact, uh, we provide uh, cost-free accounts to students as well as to educational organizations. Um, so um, I don't know if I can post a link here. Just go to our website, look up for company research and teaching, and you will find everything you need to register a cost-free account. And uh, it will be extended to the time you're working with. So it's for free. OK, thank you. And uh, another question, could you uh, elaborate more your mo mobile so with uh, other objective and functions? If yes. Um, okay, you. just uh, to, to conclude, the mobile app, and no, let, let's start uh, the other way around. Whenever you found a contractor in the, uh, with a Nova BIM system, so let's say you started an e-tendering process, there's a contract. And then you can invite um, anybody, either from your company or from a contractor's company, to download the contract on the mobile device. Then scrolling through the work items that have to be done here and there, making quantity takeoffs uh, in accordance to the work items, uh, shooting pictures and writing comments. And this data can be then synchronized with the Nova BIM platform and allows it immediately the owner or the main contractor to um, use this quantity take of data to create invoices. So this is what we provide today. Um, in the next three or six months, I hope, this year, uh, we will um, extend that functionality with a BIM model. So you will have the contract on one hand side, you have the BIM model on the other. Whenever you hit a work item of your contract, this will highlight the billing elements inside the BIM 3D model, allows you then to click on uh, a billing element and say, this has been done up to 50% or 100%, and writing back this information to the Nova BIM services and uh, do the billing and invoicing process. Um, yeah, this is the main functionality for today. What we plan then is uh, that we also allow to do uh, cost estimates and tendering documents. That means BOQs, bill of quantities, um, offline on the mobile devices. That's where we are. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We have other questions. 
Uh, another one is uh, if you uh, if your so solution uh, offer any estimation for the deconstruction and end of life cycle phase. Uh, haha, deconstruction. I mean, if you have the three D model in the software, um, what you do if you want to build the element and put cost with that building phase, or if you have it and have items to deconstruct, I think uh, it, yeah, it leads to the same thing. Either you want to construct it or you want to deconstruct it. So I would say yes. All you need is the building model. And what you need then is the work items to deconstruct each and every building element. Not aware of uh, having understood the question in that sense, but I, 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 I'd say yes. Okay, it, it was something that uh, if uh, uh, the the solution uh, manage the phases, I think the phases from uh, one deconstruction and uh, rebuilding uh, one uh, uh, one uh, one model. So if if you start with uh, uh, existing building and you have to deconstruct and uh, make another one. Okay, let's let's uh, um, yeah make a, a, a simple example. You have uh, let's say uh, a room. There is a wall in, and you want to take out this wall and create another one instead. So it comes to the same question, I guess. So you would apply cost information to the wall that you want to get out, and then you would raise uh, another wall. Yeah, where you put the cost estimate information to be built. Okay, it's clear. Okay. And um, the last one for Felix is uh, that uh, um, the lack of cl classification or poor choice of types when we, we model, when, when we model component is uh, a real and uh, a recurring problem. So is uh, your solution uh, developing automatic uh, verification for uh, identification? Um, no, it doesn't. But um, I just shared my screen to show you one thing. Um, we have here uh, highlighted a, uh, a column for foundation and uh, from the CAD system there came a, f a whole lot of information. It's really fine to work with. But even if the billing element is not defined as a column like it is here, uh, our users will be able to use any other information that has been written by um, the exporting system. For instance, the layer can be used. You just click on the layer for structure and foundation and Nova will find all the corresponding billing elements. So there are some workarounds just by using, let's say, any information that is uh, uh, coming along with a billing element to to allow you to put them into the same bucket to to estimate them in the same way. But we don't have any analyzing feature that allows us to uh, get out of the geometry of uh, the billing component uh, what it is. So if it's a slab or a wall. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Felix. And uh, now I have uh, some questions for Bilal. So. Uh, one is uh, that uh, you showed how the community uh, will grow, but uh, you can talk a little bit uh, about how you came up with the idea of uh, creating the initiative. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, in the shower? Well, no, not really. It's uh, we we were. It's it's when you're working in the in industry. Okay, you face all these problems, and you, if you're passionate about it, you try to think, how do I solve these problems within my organization? You, you, you work in an organization, you, you solve the problem to a degree, and not all problems, of course, and then you move to another organization, and you, then you face the same one. Then another one, and you face the same one. And then you realize that these problems are very common. And then you take a look a little bit, uh, you know, you go, uh, bird's eye view if you wish and you see these problems repeat themselves everywhere every country in small large organizations so say okay how can we address these problems and of course as an individual you cannot do it you know you can you can have you can do some damage okay or some good but only when working in groups 
only when working with people with the same passion, uh, with the same motivation, you know, with better skills and better competency, uh, you know, change can be enacted. So the BIMI initiative is, is such that it's a it's a it's a it's a response to, to common problems faced by all of us across countries, across languages, and it's our attempt uh, to to uh, you know address them together using a common language, a knowledge structure, and a lot a lot of passion. That's it. That's what the BIMI initiative is all about. Okay. Thank you. Another question that uh, um, the, the community did now uh, is, uh, uh, can you elaborate on, uh, um, on the kind of partnership opportunities uh, available for organizations interested in collaboration with the, with the BMA initiative? Yeah, now we, we classify different organizations uh, based on uh, their activities. So, so if you're an a education uh, organization, like a university, uh, we, we, we have specific projects to work with you, like on macro adoption for educational uh, you know, purposes. That's a one way of working with you. If you're a policy maker, you're a government agency, uh, there's another way to work with you. If you're a commercial uh, organization, we invite you to become a, a supporter you can be a general supporter. You could choose your own project you want to support and say, uh, uh, we want to accelerate the development here. Uh, so we have like a general uh, kind of uh, support package and we have one specific for each type of organization. So so as, as we, we are evolving, we are we're very open to any kind of collaboration that is uh, you know aligned with what we're trying to achieve. And what we're trying to achieve is, you know, it's no surprise, it's really common as well. So we really invite people who are as passionate as us to help us in the in the ways they see best. Yes, uh, thank you. I have another another question um, that uh, we have a, a large number of, uh, of projects uh, that uh, are going on at the, at the same time, and uh, they are all well managed, managed, but uh, they by their teams. Uh, is there anyone managing or putting all these projects together? Yeah, yeah. They, uh, let's say they're hidden. We don't see them. They're just uh, these kind of creatures that uh, try to connect everything together in the, uh, at night. But but seriously, the way we work is about a very explicit knowledge structure. So if so, so I invite everyone to to watch presentation for day two, the one we did yesterday explaining the knowledge uh, structure. So we have six top projects, we have tens of micro projects, all connected, okay? How they are connected? They are connected because they were created together. When they were developed, they were developed together, not in detail, but in general. And because they are connected because we have the BIM dictionary connecting the terminology. We have the same uh, theories, uh, you know, uh, that we apply across them. We have very we have people who understand the mission, the vision, and they're working together. So the connection becomes not as hard as people think. The disconnection happens when you start doing something, and then you do the other thing ad hoc, without thinking, without defining, without managing, without integrating. But this is not how we do it in the initiative. Everything is well thought. We will do mistakes for sure, but we are doing it slowly and methodically. Thank you. Um, now I have uh, another another question that uh, is about uh, um, elaborating in details or provide some links and emails where uh, where and when it will be possible and available to apply the different BMA project as a volunteer or an expert. Yes, uh, this was covered uh, by Oriola uh, 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 at the start, uh, and also, uh, you know, in the in the first couple of slides, there are links. When we share the materials with everyone, you, they will be able to follow the links. But for now, if they go to uh, bimexcellence.org, which is our you know our website, which really hosts everything, they will find under community uh, a page for uh, our roles. You will you will see it's empty at the moment, okay? It will be populated by September 15 with roles specific to projects. 
you could look at these roles and these projects and see who was involved and what stage they are. And if it matches you, you could apply to them and then it, they will be vetted. So everything will be online on bimexcellence.org soon. Yeah, we, we invite you also to connect with us in our social medias, in BIM Dictionary, in Instagram, and our BIM Chatship page on LinkedIn also, because always when we have open roles, we are going to share it and uh, we are going to open it right there. Okay, thank you, Lorena. I have uh, some questions also for Eric. Um, that uh, one of them is, do you have any idea what the theme of uh, uh, future F4 will be? Um, so right now F4 isn't identified. We have uh, F2, which are mall use um, templates, uh, which will be presented right after uh, this discussion and F3, which are software tool lists, which will be presented later on too. Um, I mean, the, the way that these are named uh, might evolve and so forth. The idea is to um, basically build the, uh, the the conceptual foundations, the, the definitions, the little each part of the um, the, the light framework. And uh, as was asked in the, uh, the, the question earlier, um, you know, we'll take care of connecting all the, the pieces together. So uh, more information will be uh, definitely delivered and uh, uh, disseminated to uh, identify which packages where you would like to uh, be involved uh, at a later date on the website. Yes, thank you. I have another another question, Eric. So you, you recently uh, co-authored a paper with Bilal about the life cycle information transformation exchange, lead, uh, for using blockchain for audit trial. Was it a part of the BMA uh, F1 project? Um, so I guess uh, the fundamentally the, the, the light framework um, and uh, yes, I did uh, I did have the opportunity to uh, to work with Bilal um, at a later time once this framework was developed and uh, just try to get it to publication. Um, the Without getting to the specific technologies, uh, I apologize, Woody. Um, without getting to specific technologies and how the the solutions will uh, deliver, uh, be de delivered, uh, the idea of the, the framework and the publication was to just set the conceptual foundations um, to sort of put it out there. Say there's an alternative to legacy practices and information management, uh, digital coupling. Uh, we talk about the digital twins, but digital couplings um, are all sort of novel and um, uh, new ways to think about this uh, this problem, and to be, be able to uh, offer a new perspective, uh, new language, um, uh, and try to tie it into new and emerging technologies. So yes, blockchain will become uh, more and more um, popular. Artificial intelligence, um, trying to, ex to 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 allow um, the development of these new approaches, uh, and actually have a theoretical foundation to to uh, explain them uh, is important. So definitely, um, you know, as we move along, uh, it'll become more and more uh, defined um, and it will be more and more developed. But uh, at least now for the moment, we have a, a common thread, a common theme that allows us to work together uh, on this common problem. Okay, can I add uh, one thing, if you don't mind, uh, uh, Andrew? Uh, I, I actually, after we published this paper, we started receiving, uh, you know, communications from people who are working on different problems in our industry, and one of them is a is a group who are using blockchain in a large construction uh, project, and and by reading the the light framework, they said, oh, this could be a potential solution. Uh, for our information flows. So we cannot answer the question to say, yes, the light framework would work, okay? We, but it is designed to work, okay? It is designed to work whether it is a distributed ledger or a centralized database. It doesn't matter for the light framework. It's all about information flow. Whether you use blockchain or you don't use blockchain, that's a really a more uh, technical aspect of it. So uh, watch this space, uh, you know, Eric, myself, and, uh, you know, the, the rest of the, you know, the Project F team will be addressing many of these questions, connection between light framework and blockchain, AI, uh, you know, internet of things, etc. So it's a very interesting and large project 
and it's worth watching if not uh, also contributing and joining yes thank you bilal i have uh, uh, another question for you um, uh, could it be possible to prepare a 12 uh, lessons program for introducing beam at the university using conference or workshops we discussed the uh, learning uh, uh, aspect. We have a project called Project C about uh, uh, learning and competency and competence. Uh, we we intend to do this slowly and carefully. And as part of that project, we can tell from now that we will developing and delivering a framework that will help people to deliver learning lessons based on the materials that we research and we deliver. Okay. So the the question, the answer to that is yes. The action, the, the, uh, how we're going to do it, we don't know yet, but in the next six to nine months, we'll be calling for an educational symposium, for, first with the community and then with a the, with the larger, with, with larger network. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you all for your contribution. And uh, now we, we are going go on to the second part of the seminar, discussing the integrated information project. Uh, now we will see the F2 project, that is uh, uh, the model use uh, template that is uh, developed by the Amazonians group, composed by uh, Regina Ruschel, Fernanda Machado, Lorena Moreira, Paula Motta and Bruno Motta. Uh, Ms. Fernanda Machado and, uh, um, and pa uh, is the leader of uh, uh, MU4040, uh, and Ms. Lorena Moreira, co-leader of, uh, of the project, will present the micro project F2 from integrated information project called Model Use Template. Thank you, Fernanda and Lorena, for your presence, and the word uh, is with you now. Um, thanks, Andrew. Um, bon dia, boa tarde, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, me, uh, Lorena and I will present the micro project F2 that is about model use templates. And um, considering the timeline, we visually highlighted the time that we spent for developing and getting maturity of the, the concept itself, as well as um, one of its instantiation, um, which we defined as the first phase of this effort, right? And uh, it started uh, in 2018 with a call to action from Bilal and the official launch of the micro project. And then we formed this team, uh, later named the Amazonians. Uh, since then, we put the initial plan uh, for MUT into action. And in the end of 2018, we already had the, the concept um, where we, we created and validated a framework. We revealed its taxonomy. We generated a glossary considering uh, the BIM dictionary terminology, the light framework, um, and other academic and standard efforts. And in um, 2019, we got a huge support from DBQ, uh, especially from Eric uh, Perrier, and he started the MUT instantiation, right? Where um, we applied um, the model use template for class detection. So this content was organized in the model use uh, template guideline. This is already available in B Excellence website, and also published it uh, in a shorter version, sorry, in BIM Dictionary. So um, finally, in, we started in uh, 2020 with a new challenge uh, to develop a management strategy aiming at recruiting new teams for scaling the uh, model use template to other expertise. And with this aim, we now welcome also uh, Bruno Mota, that is helping us with lean management techniques to better boost the second phase. So um, today, besides presenting the, the project itself, we have a call to action uh, for the second phase. Um, and hopefully we, we can meet with all of you again to present the first results in the beginning of the next year. Um, the model use or MUs, the, they are classified in general domain Houston model uses. And the domain model uses are those applied in specific process of our daily activities, right? In architecture, engineering, construction. And uh, today there is a list of 76 model uses. 
distributed in seven categories, as you can see on the screen. So capturing and representing, um, planning and designing, simulating and quantifying, construction, fabricating, operating, maintaining, monitoring, controlling, and linking and extending. So all of them can support the whole building uh, life cycle. And for instance, we can explore a uh, simulated and quantifying a category, go further, and detail or consult one of its re related model uses, uh, for example, class detection. And um, uh, just for info, the model uses list is not a fixed list. We can include more MUs if needed. And um, concerning uh, a BIN implementation plan or a BIN execution plan, other guidelines needed uh, in an organization to handle the BIN in an effective way, way uh, the model uses must be defined uh, and meet the strategic purpose, right? So we can say that the MU uh, are the heart or the backbone of a complex process, considering uh, the B and option. And that's it. Uh, the model uses themselves, uh, they are complex and part of the practice since they digitally transform uh, workflows. And for instance, we, we are talking about um, photogrammetry, constructability analysis, asset maintenance, and so on. Uh, but uh, they are superficially described uh, nowadays by other references uh, we have available. And considering the whole of the BIN dictionary as a structured database for knowledge sharing uh, that already has the, the model uses as terms, including a, a summary description if you, if you can explore in, in the website, we, we have seen the, the aggregated value to detail all the 76 model uses. Firstly, creating a template to embrace all of them conceptually, and then spe specifically describing them, right? To educate, to assess, and assist both individuals and organizations in different ways um, that we are going to present next slides. So uh, one more thing is that detailing all of them is really challenging. So we need a huge contribution uh, from other B experts and the community, right? And that templates um, describe a model use with uh, information structured by categories, properties, fields, each one of them with a connected meaning. Uh, that, that's what uh, Bilal said uh, before. Uh, everything in, in, in the B initiative is connected. And uh, here we, we followed uh, also this semantically um, effort, right? And the categories are um, named as basic, advanced, uh, activity flows, and references. So um, to validate the model use template, we did an instantiation with the popular model use for class detection that is coded in the model use list as uh, MU4040. And um, in the template, the basic properties are an identification brief description of a, a model use. Basically, we are talking about a, a set of identification embracing the EMU series, uh, title, version, a short description that's already published in the BIN dictionary. So for example, uh, what we have for class detection? Uh, that is a, a model use representing uh, the use of 3D models to coordinate uh, different disciplines, to identify and solve uh, possible clashes between um, virtual elements, prior to action construction or fabrication. And it is related to clash avoidance, uh, which is a, a conscious effort to avoid special overlaps uh, during uh, essentially the, the model authoring, right? Uh, back, please, uh, Lorena. So um, in addition, uh, each MU has its main purpose. Uh, when an organization thinks of uh, uh, defining clash detection as a priority uh, in a BIN execution plan, for example, it's clear that their purpose comprises to provide class-free BIM models, identify issues, uh, check for interferences, improve collaboration, et cetera, et cetera. And it's relevant to highlight that uh, the purpose description is semantically connected with BIM dictionary terminology, okay? Um, so uh, what about uh, the advanced properties? They are description of the resources, uh, support and model use, as resources, we have uh, documents used, data used, system software, equipment, methods. And I will show examples of software and methods, the next slide. Um, this is an initial work uh, with, with the MU list that uh, is being detailed in the micro project F3. Uh, a software list was created with a structure information based on beauty smart guidelines and vendors information as well. 
such as um, in bit functions of class detection, extensibility, and so on. And this list uh, is detailed and accessible in an Airtable format to enable filtering, group information, etc. And in addition, we, we also defined a, a general method that covers uh, a specific MU. So, for instance, uh, class detection is a model use which process can be part of a broader method, for example, a quality management method. So, all of them will follow uh, both general methods and specific methods uh, uh, that we, we gain practice, right? And then we, we have the activity flows, um, an explanation of the activities needed to execute a model use. And um, uh, the activities were organized in sequence to compose a macro workflow detailed in three levels. And uh, it was designed in an iterative manner. So in the macro view, um, it is possible to see a step-by-step -step to guide the model coordination activities. Uh, for example, to define the class detection strategy and then prepare discipline or federated discipline um, prepare the federated model uh, and so on until we can uh, resolve the issues detected by interference check. And this macro workflow for clash detection uh, is already available in Dictionary in a Droyo platform, as well as uh, each activity uh, was detailed, right? So we noticed that um, a free content about clash detection, uh, there is uh, demos in practice, right? Just explore some of these activities, uh, and we we uh, uh, went further and detailed each of them uh, to consider to comprise all the, the coordination workflow, right? Um, we searched for foundations uh, to cover the partial content that I mentioned in this presentation, uh, plus all the work we have developed, in, which means uh, searching, reading, classifying, uh, journal papers, book chapters, uh, uh, similar efforts. And also, we did the SWOT matrix to run an external uh, assessment. Uh, first at Unicamp, right? And, and, and later presenting uh, this work to the community. And uh, so the, the assessment gave us some results, as showed on the screen. Uh, we, we got this uh, strength perception that uh, our uh, MUT is very detailed, direct, practical, didactic, clear, uh, extensive. Uh, also, the weakness that uh, uh, it's really complex to be developed uh, requires a lot of experience, um, detailed and global vision, a lot of information is needed, and so on. Um, also, the opportunities that uh, a shortage of literature on the subject uh, is available. Uh, we have a significant demand to develop our other model uses to guide uh, individuals and organizations. Uh, we need uh, an standard uh, standardization in a more um, structured way, right? And finally, we have some threats here, right? Uh, similar actions, uh, the development time, and then unfriendly and interface. So um, based on all of it uh, and the SWOT feedback, uh, we simplified the MUT content for sharing both uh, in a guide that corresponds to the second column. And it is available in the Bing Excellence website, as well as a shorter version published uh, in the Bing Dictionary itself. So uh, this shorter version corresponds to a quarter of what we developed uh, as a content, meaning that the essence became the basis for the knowledge uh, we shared when we speak of the MUT 4040, right? So uh, we consider the development time for all MUs as the next step uh, to be solved. And now Lorraine is going to detail uh, this exactly, right? The strategy to scale this effort to other model uses. Thanks, Fernanda. Hi, everyone. So after all of it, we are now developing a strategy for shared knowledge. From the class detection, the other 75 will be detailed. All the model uses will have the same schema because the template was designed to cover all of them. Now, I will present the steps of the project, considering the structuring to make the 76 model uses. Based on knowledge sharing, I will explain our expertise for structuring this new phase so that the next teams can perform in a more optimized way. Starting, uh, next slide, please. Starting with the essence, 
uh, we return to the explanation of what model use template is for. It is a conceptual framework that aims to educate, assess, and assist. Educate informing the benefits of each model use, assessing delivery ability, assisting the development of associated competencies. Based on the way in which our group applied the model use template to describe class detection, we extracted the process to be followed by other groups. We started with a survey and review of reference books, reports, guides, papers about the model use in question. We then proceed to detail the categories of properties for the model use template. For each new category, we presented the result for reviewing, and this moment was identified as a review gate. This moment of revision implied updates of what we had done, or even the action of moving forward in plan updating. Thus, there was a constant cumulative parallelism of development until the final review gate. We decide to define an order for the bin uses intending to guide us during the recruitment. This order was based on a scoring system from zero to three that classified the domain model uses in terms of simplicity, essential innovation, and internal know-how. We analyzed all 76 model uses, and the first 10 results were this. The first use being class detection, which was the basis for our work so far, followed by accessibility analysis, photogrammetry, construction planning, and so on. But this order is not mandatory. It serves as a basis to help us manage the micro project and, and negotiate with the upcoming team. So, for the model use template development process to be a success, it is essential to select a team with a relevant profile for the required task and model use. Concerning the recruitment, depending on the availability of teams, the prepare to call step may be executed or skipped, going directly to the execute the call step. The next steps are the team's registrations, pre-selection and interviews. Then the model user team, ma uh, team management uh, makes the decision of the application and invites the selected team to sign the manifesto. The final step of recruitment is a kickoff meeting. And now to identify the best teams for each model use, we created a team profile to be fulfilled during the recruitment process just showed. The profile will contain the basis information of the team crew. And it is, it is important to say that this information matches with other service from the initiative and the data can be added and treated in the group database. Also, we are trying to understand the team crew following their competencies. The colorful picture is based on the individual competency index by Sukar and tries to measure the depth of conceptual understanding in the extent of practical experience. And once the process is running, we are deploying lean management techniques to management the production of the model use templates. There is a tracker containing teams information and the start and finish of all model uses for each step of the process. That said, we can forecast the workloads helping us identify the most intense days of work and balance the pace of the teams. Also, and also, we have main metrics during the project's life cycle. For now, considering the strategy to replicate the model use, we have a call to action to do. With great power comes great responsibility. Knowledge is power. All knowledge is connected. The fun is in making the connection. Become a volunteer. The team applications will open soon. Uh, this presentation was a summary of our project. Uh, I hope you enjoy. This is our team. And these are our contacts on the LinkedIn platform. So let's connect. Thank you and obrigada. Thank you, thank you, Fernanda and Lorena, for presenting uh, a work uh, with uh, so much innovation and uh, contribution. 
to the community. I want uh, also to thank all the members of uh, Amazonians group. And uh, uh, before starting the next presentation, I want to say something about the, the other questions that the, uh, the community did. All the questions will have an answer and uh, we have to um, and we, we, we have to respect the timing of the presentation. So I did also one, uh, one part of the questions. We will send to each of you the, the answers or we will publish on uh, our website. Now, uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Burju Baruchu, leader of uh, uh, micro project F3 from Integrated Information Project, will present this micro project called uh, Software Cl Classifications. Welcome, Burju. Um, thank you, Enrol. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, herkese merhaba in Turkish. Uh, I'm the project lead for software classification project uh, under the F3 technical solutions. And I'm glad to be presenting the preparations for this uh, recently launched project of BIM E initiative. So F uh, so software classification uh, is a BIMI initiative project um, to identify, collate, uh, classify and maintain a list of software tools used for designing, constructing and operating all types of assets across their life cycle. So this project will be focusing on the tools used in built environments. Um, we have three main goals. So what do we aim with this project? Why did we initiate this project? So the first one, uh, we would like to deliver an online module that would assist practitioners in searching and identifying the software tools uh, most suited um, to their competency profile and organization's performance profile and a project's unique delivery requirements. So we would like to we would emphasize the importance of choosing the right tool for the job and considering these three aspects, uh, three perspectives uh, when doing that. So we need to consider an individual's competencies, we need to consider the, um, the capabilities of an organization, or we need to consider the project types. So we need to consider the digital, um, the requirements of a digital asset we want to deliver. The second one is that we would deliver, uh, we will deliver a guide uh, that would assist practitioners in analyzing the software tools requirements and identifying the best fit for purpose. So this would be a guide to assist them how they could uh, analyze the requirements, how they could establish the requirements and how they could uh, find the best fit uh, for the purpose. Uh, the last one is uh, we would like to engage uh, with researchers, practitioners, software developers, vendors as much as we can. And we would like to involve them in delivering this project and maintaining and extending the deliverables of this project. So these are our three goals. Uh, what we would like to deliver, uh, we would like to deliver software tools list um, and we would classify this list. Uh, we would organize software tools inside this list. So we would deliver, uh, we will deliver classification criteria um, and a software selector within the BIM dictionary for hosting the list, uh, a software selection guide for rating the software and um, ma making decisions, so selecting a software, and we will deliver community mechanisms uh, for developing, so community plans for developing, maintaining the project deliverables. So these are our deliverables. Um, so we can, uh, the scope of the project, how do we identify a software tool? Uh, so the soft, uh, we identified as a, as a software application used as a tool by a human actor um, for designing, constructing and or operating an asset across its life cycle. So the term includes mobile apps, middleware extensions or plugins, but uh, we will initially exclude the software needed, for example, for VR headsets or 3D printers. Um, we can go forward. Yeah, um, as mentioned, we would deliver a software tools list. Uh, firstly, we would create a master software tools list, which will include an inventory of the software tools we have identified as the F3 
uh, F3 team with their classifications, with labels, tags, and some attributes uh, which are needed to clarify how this tool may be used in, um, in an assets lifecycle, uh, as well as its availability, um, the functions and its award affordability and many other criteria. Uh, how are we going to deliver the master list? If we go a little, if we get one uh, slide before. So we would start a survey and we will ask you, we will ask the public which tools they are using currently and um, in which settings um, they are using this tool. So we would create then a master list which includes all the software tools and we would have clear inclusion and exclusion rules. So we would have some rules to include the software suggested. Uh, when we have the master list, we would then um, start a second survey, then we would reach software vendors um, and ask them and um, include them in our projects so that they could uh, give us information about uh, the software, its capabilities and its technical information. Um, once we have the master list, we could uh, derive some filters list uh, as uh, needed according to a specific criteria uh, as presented by the F2 uh, model use template team. Uh, for example, we could create a, a filters list um, for a model use, like uh, for clash detection, for accessibility and uh, analysis, if a tool uh, or for the tools supporting these or any other criteria. Uh, we would, um, as mentioned before, we would create a classification criteria to organize these tools. Um, we have an initial classification criteria, which is grouped under uh, four uh, evolving set of criteria. Uh, so the first one is a general one to group the tool under a main category and identify uh, its functions. The second one, uh, the second set is the technical criteria about the supported, um, about the formats that a software tool supports or in supported languages, what type of uh, user support uh, it's available, um, does it support uh, open, um, op uh, open formats like IFC, we would then um, have a set for that. Uh, the third one is um, how the tool is used um, in a project, so information users. Um, this is then in, uh, divided into three, like model users, um, data users, and document users. So this is where uh, we this project uh, will be uh, aligned with uh, our other projects, and we will use, for example, the model users like this uh, 70, uh, six model users as tags. Uh, how are we going to develop it? We would um, research into similar efforts um, and have service for that also. Once we have these, we would have then our requirements for developing a software selector, uh, which will be um, we could go forward, uh, which will be hosted in the BIM dictionary. So once we have a master list, once we have developed our classification criteria, we know um, the, the requirements for a software selector, we would um, start prototyping uh, to provide a user interface for browsing, uh, searching and sorting software tools, uh, creating filters lists, uh, printing, exporting them uh, through the BIM dictionary platform. So this is where we uh, provide the connection with our BIM Dictionary project. Um, the next uh, one is the software selection guide. Uh, we would provide guidance how, how to use the software selector model on BIM Dictionary platform. Uh, we would also provide guidance. Um, we will also provide checklists, uh, some rating scales, and decision support matrices to assist practitioners in assessing the suitability of the software tools for their, um, yeah, for their own, for uh, for their organizations or project specific requirements. Um, um, the project uh, is. Uh, it, 
we recently launched this project and uh, we have prepared this um, strategy with um, Bilal and the strategy is reviewed by um, dear Eric. So uh, we are currently uh, at the project uh, strategy development phase and uh, we will go forward uh, with the project it is uh, setting up the project team uh, and as i um, elaborated a little bit uh, we would go forward with uh, defining the classification criteria and we would uh, publish it as a beam e initiative resource uh, then we would uh, develop data collection tool for our surveys uh, we would then um, develop the master software tools list. Um, we would have service for that and we would then publish it. Um, after that, the next step is, of course, developing the software selector, um, which will be hosted on BIM dictionary. Um, and we would uh, provide a guide. Afterwards, we will work on the guide um, to assist practitioners on how to use it. Uh, the last step is, of course, developing an outreach uh, plan um, for maintaining the deliverables of this project. Uh, so we would create community plans uh, on how to engage, um, how to maintain this project. So this is the project workflow. Um, next steps. Um, so we would uh, publish this. We would publish the project strategy. So this is the next step ahead of us, um, and we would uh, go on with setting up the project team. We would of course need to identify the team roles. Uh, we need to establish also protocols for communication, for selection of the contributors, how we reach the. Uh, contributors, uh, how we um, uh, how we include them in our projects, so, or how do we acknowledge them? We need to establish protocols for that. So these are the next steps for this project. Yeah, the project strategy will be published uh, on third of August. So we would welcome any feedback from you. Um, if you um, uh, if you register uh, uh, from the website, you will receive notification about it. So we would welcome any feedback uh, for the project strategy. So thank you uh, all. Teşekkürler. <laughs> I would give the word to Andrew Albert. Thank you, thank you, Burju. I I think it's clear for everyone that the, the software are very important to reach our, our daily uh, working objectives. So it's, it's really uh, good work. Uh, now we, we are going to the, uh, the other session of question and answers. So let's uh, see what the public wants uh, to know about the, the model use template and the software cl classification micro project. I would uh, also like to invite Mr. Mansur Hamadama to conduct uh, this uh, question and answer session. You're welcome, Mansur. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. My name is Mansur Hamadama. I is a student with the uh, Barbara Gordon University, Aberdeen, here in the UK. I'm also a lecturer with the uh, Cognopol Polytechnic in Nigeria. Uh, I'm a co-editor uh, co to uh, BIM, uh, BIM initiative uh, on uh, BIM Dictionary, Nigeria. So welcome, everyone. The first question uh, came from um, Ricardo Alexandra. He, uh, and the question goes to Lorana. It says, is there any MU? or a memorandum of ampli uh, understanding applied to forensic engineering and or building inspection development? Hello. Okay, and we have in the operating and maintenance category, uh, the model used for building uh, inspection, called as a 6040. So um, we can develop and fulfill the template for this MEU and I, as well as validate it against practical experience in the second phase. Fernanda, can you complete? You want to complete? Oh, exactly. It's a, exactly this. Uh, we are going to open the recruitment phase. So uh, if you are interested in developing this uh, this MU in specific, 
the, the for beauty inspection. We we welcome you to to join us in this uh, recruitment process. Yes. Um, Masur, you are on, on mute. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, thank you for for the response. Uh, the next question uh, goes uh, to uh, Fernanda and Lorana, um, and it's coming from Damir. He says, "Great work. Do you have plan for testing model use templates in practice on the real project?" Thank you. Okay, I, I can answer this one. Uh, Thank you, Damir. Um, it is part of which uh, development step, right, to test and practice uh, uh, the model use template for proof of concept. And actually, uh, it is one of the assessment methods to do it. So we can do it through experimentation, simulation, case study, uh, focal groups, and so on. And uh, with the, the knowledge shared, we can go further and adopt uh, it in a real project. So. Uh, for the class detection uh, MU, you can already test it in a real project, following our, our guidelines in the Bing Dictionary, uh, right, that we, we already edited and published it. And it, it is important to say that it, it is an iterative process, right? So we can evaluate the model use template as we need and update it as we need as well. That's great. Uh, the next, uh, uh, first he recommended you, which is uh, Josh. He said he recommended the... Uh, they are great work, and he actually asks uh, uh, to let me know how I can, how I can, can I contribute to, con contribute in the lighting area of this. Okay, uh, thank, thanks. Uh, oh, it's Pimenta. Uh, thanks, Pimenta. Uh, good to see you. Uh, we are going to open the recruitment process soon, and uh, you can submit your proposal for uh, the lighting analysis. Uh, in the model use list is coded as uh, 4120, so you can check it out and see if it uh, fits with your expectations and uh, submit to us a, a proposal. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your response. Uh, it's still, still looking forward to seeing your questions coming up. Uh, not one yet, but I would like to ask you if you can maybe further elaborate regarding having feedback of uh, the uh, 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 software tools usage, uh, the, the users of softwares, like feedback, how to maybe improve the subsequent uh, versions and maybe some uh, issues related to the present version and things like that. Can you please elaborate on that? So the question is from me, right? Um, so we would, of course, uh, work in close contact with the software vendors. And uh, we would have, uh, we would of course evaluate the functions um, and the use of the software tool. Uh, this would, this could be also helpful for the software developers to further their software or to see the need for uh, development or the, the area that needs to be developed. So this could be also beneficial uh, for the software developers to see um, the needed functions maybe, yes. Uh, could that possibly be uh, from the software users? Do they have like a kind of a restriction compared to having like a feedback from other uh, BIM initiative members? Um, there is no restriction uh, for giving feedback. Anybody can f give feedback. Um, so it would be actually nice if we get feedback from the users of the software. So it would be really nice. Uh, if you reach them also, if you engage with them and involve them also in the project. So, mm -hmm. of course, we need uh, the experts on uh, specific software tools if you want to include information about these software tools in our project. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I got a question from uh, Regina, and she asks, uh, this question goes to Boju. Mm -hmm. How does F3 relate mm -hmm. to the software list in M? use that is a uh, model use mm -hmm. thank you regina for the question um so the 
aim of the F3 project is to create a master list, which include all the software tools, and these tools will be classified according to a classification criteria, and one of the labels would be model use. So it would, uh, when once we have it published, once we have it ready, uh, it could be used to generate or derive list for any model use. So the project will be, of course, connected, and we will also get feedback from the F2 team. Uh, we would work closely with the F2 team uh, who is developing um, the model use templates, of course, because it will be included also in their work. Um, yeah, so we, it will allow um, a, a automated generation of a list for the model users also. Great, can, can thank I, you. Can I make a comment about it? Okay. <laughs> um, um, in the, the class detection development, we, mm -hmm. we've uh, explored so many software um, mm -hmm. to understand how the, the class detection uh, had a, um, the text detection functionality uh, it was inbuilt, right, in, in any, any mm -hmm. of this software, or if it, it was um, an extension of this mm -hmm. uh, software. So, uh, Burko, uh, um, do, do you, in, in your F3 project, mm -hmm. uh, have this uh, just an, an overview, a macro view of the software and the MUs uh, um, activities uh, are going to detail this kind of functions, or it will be a, a, a together effort? Uh, it will be a together effort and we will all, of course, discuss the possibilities on how to structure the information so that it would be available for the model use team, your team also. So uh, it, it will be a joint effort as other BIM-E initiative projects. So, I mean, we all work together, we all uh, have, a, uh, have, a, have a common goal and, of course, we will work together to structure it in a way so that it would be um, easier to create this list for the model use templates, of course. Sure, good to mm -hmm. know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great, thank you. Uh, another question uh, from Damir again, he sent another question that uh, to 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 Bourgeois, that mm -hmm. considering the different characteristics of uh, software tools and unique characteristics of projects in building mm -hmm. in in building industry how mm -hmm. do you plan to test different software tools for different projects mm -hmm. so this is actually where we need really contributors supporters for this project because um, there are many tools currently at the market more than 500 uh, and there are many software vendors and we really need experts uh, who are um, who have experience on these software tools to validate the information we are providing. Uh, of course, we will do uh, analysis and we will provide information, but we need to validate this information. Uh, we can do also uh, some tests, but we need to work closely with the experts and we can also include software vendors. Uh, we could do some product demos. We could have an insight. We could have a better insight on the software functions. So this is the aim currently. Thank you very much mm -hmm. for your quick response and uh, elaborated, uh, quite elaborate. Uh, another question goes to you again. <laughs> you have so much questions, sorry for that. Uh, this question <laughs> is like this. <laughs> Can you elaborate on software tools link to BIM dictionary? Um, so this is a work currently under development. So uh, we would like to host a module, a separate module on BIM dictionary that would host the list of software tools. So this is currently in uh, development. Uh, we need to create a prototype for it, but uh, the idea is that um, we, we could um, present the information on BIM dictionary so that people can search, uh, according to some labels, um, according uh, according to the uh, according to their requirements, and export uh, list, or um, we could use this uh, database um, as uh, needed for other lists that would be hosted on the dictionary. Maybe uh, creating a list uh, for IFC. We have the definition of IFC. We could have a list supporting the. Uh, um, we could have a list of software tools supporting the IFC format, for example. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, current under development, and we have actually we, we have many possibilities uh, okay. to include um, these lists in the BIM dictionary. That's great to know that. Mm -hmm. uh, the next question goes to 
Lorena, and uh, it goes like this. Oh, the question is coming from Lorena. Uh, going to you, uh, Boujou. Uh, how do you how do you plan to analyze the software's uh, interoperability oper uh, operability mm -hmm. in in the software classification project? Mm -hmm. um, we would do a firstly simple assessment. Um, uh, if of, of course these are the things we will develop during the project process, but the main idea is to have an initial assessment uh, with the software vendors or the expert on the software tools. Then we could also use some. Um, we could um, we have some certification programs that assist the ability of a software to support IFC. Uh, so we could also reach these uh, deliverables. We could use these deliverables as an input to our project also. So this could be also other formats like DCF. So we would, um, of course, benefit from the efforts that are currently or um, done in the industry. Okay, thank you, Lorena. Uh, oh, we have another question uh, and then saying that it says, it is a great pleasure to contribute with uh, with the MU uh, applied for forensic engineering and building inspection. So what do you think about that? Good to hear. <laughs> when when we, we launch the, the recruiting mm -hmm. process, we we will wait for, for this uh, submission. Oh, okay. Uh, another question is, uh, can you apply as individual volunteer or or only as a group for developing a model use template. That's coming from Lorena. Okay. Uh, for now, we are thinking only as a as a group, uh, sharing with academics and and companies, uh, three to six, and I think that this is that we think for for now. But we can join other group as individual also. Okay. Nice work. So uh, what do you think if like uh, someone is coming as individual, probably having like uh, a firm, something like that, working on software development, things like that, what do you think about that? Um, in, in our case of the, the uh, micro project F2, we, we intend to, to manage teams, right? So if a, 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 an individual uh, submits something, we will try to arrange that and, and put uh, this person in, in a team that fits with the, the initial uh, submit. Okay. Still waiting for uh, questions from the public. Uh, while waiting, can you maybe have uh, like uh, some explanation regarding the link between the uh, the project F3 uh, with the Beam Dictionary project, please. Um, I guess we have already covered that. Um, so we would hold, we would have an, a separate model uh, on Beam Dictionary. So we would develop, we will create a prototype. Uh, we would test it, uh, um, and we would. Um, we would have the master list on this. Um, online module for people, for the practitioners to be able to search um, and filter, uh, maybe export some of this and use in their uh, work. Like uh, if I would like to, um, I'm tasked with the software selection for a company or I'm consulting um, a company for software selection, I can use this module uh, as a basis to create some list and I could have a rating scale and I could evaluate um, the software according to the criteria for my purpose. And then I could, um, and this could support then the decision making for the people who are tasked with software selection within a company. Uh, maybe they would select a software for them uh, mm -hmm. for, as an individual mm -hmm. or um, if, uh, if there there's a consultant uh, who is uh, consulting a client, uh, just mm -hmm. as an example, mm -hmm. so that we could make objective decisions based on a method, based on a, a structured knowledge, uh, based on a reliable resource. So this is the aim, actually. We could uh, so that we could make a really um, 
objective decisions uh, in a, a manner that has a, um, established method and based on a reliable resource. So this That's is great. the main aim. Yeah, this That's is great. the main aim. Yeah, we have another question uh, uh, from uh, Bruno, and the question says, "Hi, how do you how how are you going to include customizations and development of extensions, plugs in or add-ins in the analysis since their compu uh, computational power is huge and the applications are numerous?" Yes, this is uh, something that we are also uh, that we would also um, de um, define in during the project process. So the project is at its initiation stage, and we know that the software has different modules and it has different functions. If you have one module, you could do something else, and so on. Uh, we need to, of course, take uh, this also into account, and we need to find a way on how to um, tackle this issue. Um, different versions also have different functions, so we mm -hmm. need to consider those also. Um, yeah, the applications are numerous, there are many plugins, and yeah, yeah we will also take um, this into consideration, of course. But this is something that we would um, we would work on as the project project progress. So we are currently at the strategy development phase. But thank you for all the questions. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I think we have project. another me, probably last question. Uh, <laughs> it goes to Buju again, and this question is: Are you thinking of including the community of indi uh, independent developers, mm -hmm. setups, and uh, open open sources? like uh, software open sources? Mm -hmm, of course, I mean, we would also, uh, I mean, uh, we would include anybody who has interest in this project, who wants to contribute to this project, but we would of course have some criteria for including a software in our list. It has to have a stable version. It has to be publicly available. And uh, maybe we would have other criteria. Um, so we need to, yeah, we need uh, of course the support of the independent software developers, uh, startups, open source. But as I said, we would have clear inclusion and exclusion rules. The software needs to have a stable version and needs to be public already. Thank you for okay. the question. OK. <laughs> so what do you think for maybe probably uh, having like someone trying to uh, uh, provide like a add-in into like a software? Can that be proposed to you? Um, yes, because the project includes also exclusions and plugins, um, we include that also. Uh, so they could, um, we will start a survey anyway. So we would ask the public which tools they are using. When we ask the public, of course, software developers can also answer and put their tools in our mm -hmm. survey. And so that we would know that there is a tool, there's a new tool, uh, maybe already developed, but not uh, well known, but we would know the software and we would check it. So we would analyze if it, we could include it in our mm -hmm. list. So th this is the way. So we would, of course, uh, ask the public um, uh, with surveys. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs> Thank you very much for the answers. So we can now hand over to, uh, to, 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 to Erdogan. Thank Are you here with me? You. Thank you to all. Thank you, Burju. Thank you, Lorena. Thank you, Fernanda. Thank you, Mansur, for this uh, question and answer time. So uh, we are uh, arrived at the at the, at the end of um, our day three of the first excellence uh, seminar, and it was uh, I think a really interesting day to to close the the cycle of uh, three days of uh, the the excellence seminar. Uh, so uh, it's uh, it's clear that we have so so much to um, to share and we did it in um, only two hours. Uh, of course, we can improve the, our contribute for so many projects uh, and uh, that uh, that are are coming in uh, BM, BMA initiative. Um, our mission is uh, on way and uh, the future can uh, be really exciting if we are uh, active uh, part of the digital transformation and innovation in, in BIM. So I, I would like to thank um, our presenters of the day. So uh, Bilal Sukar, uh, Lorena Luedi, uh, Oriola Braoli, uh, Eric Poirer, Fernanda Machado, Lorena Moreira and uh, uh, Burju Baruccio. 
Uh, our moderator, uh, Mansur Hamadama, our supporter, Mr. Felix Grau uh, from Nova Beam, and uh, all, all you for your contribution, for uh, sharing, uh, in sharing knowledge and experiences with, uh, with the public. They, uh, we have a huge community uh, with more than 130 volunteers uh, from 40 countries that work a lot to improve uh, BIMA initiative. Uh, I want also to thank the BIM Africa initiative for uh, outreach uh, support to African countries. And uh, uh, let me say something about uh, how can uh, you support us. So they, uh, we have two, two ways. One of them is um, uh, the support by singing the BIM Excellence uh, Manifesto. If you share our mission, uh, you are welcome and you can be part of uh, our project. And the second way is the support uh, becoming an initiative supporter. So um, uh, we, we know that uh, the technical support uh, costs, uh, costs uh, money and it can be better with uh, a lot of uh, friends and a lot of support uh, uh, that uh, shares uh, with, with other um, solutions that uh, shares our vision and want to support us uh, in, uh, in our uh, mission. All this uh, seminar also was uh, developed uh, through the hard work of uh, uh, the Dream Team during two, two months. So congratulations and uh, thanks to Argavan Akbarie, uh, Bilal Sukar, Bruno Motta, uh, Burju Baruccio, uh, Lorena Luedi, and uh, Paola Motta. <laughs> I, I have to give the, the, the word to Lorena that uh, have to say something. Uh, I'd like to have a special thank you for the Dream Team, the, those who are here. We worked a lot in the background to make this excellent seminar happen. Uh, even if it was with the outreach material and the connections or the tech as Paula or the technical solutions with Burju, our lean guy and word uh, with award knowledge Bruno and also Argavan that was our main contact with all the presenters, moderators, hosters, supporters and everyone and our guides that's below who guided always us with the BIM initiative strategy. So I'd like to thank you for your great effort. And uh, I'm glad what we, we have done in those three days. So thank you, guys. Thank you. So, uh, thank you. Everybody. Thank you also. <laughs> Our special thanks uh, goes uh, obviously to to all of uh, you that uh, joining us uh, today and uh, in the other days of this uh, BIM Excellence Seminar. And uh, don't, uh, uh, don't forget uh, to visit our website, uh, that is uh, um, beamexcellence.org. That are some numbers of, uh, of the, the other uh, days of uh, our BIM Excellence. So uh, we can see a lot of, uh, of uh, participation. So we are really uh, honored about that, um, that, uh, that resu result that BIM Excellence was uh, 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 really appreciated from all the uh, the social or other um, other uh, parts like uh, LinkedIn or uh, the, the news, uh, the new page on uh, Instagram and uh, Facebook. So um, I want to, to thank everybody for this uh, this event and the, the, those days uh, of uh, BIM Excellence Seminar. Thank you all. <clears throat> Thank you also, Andriol, for your uh, hosting and uh, for all, all who participated. And uh, we all, all the community, look look forward to offering you 
uh, more excellent seminars, not in the near future because <laughs> everyone has been working so hard, uh, you know, uh, the past three months. But uh, we, we promise you a lot of webinars covering all these topics in more detail. Uh, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.